Buonasera e benvenuti a tutti. Mi dispiace, non parlo molto bene l'italiano, ma spero imparare in breve tempo durante il mio soggiorno in Italia. Vedremo quali saranno i miei progressi per il prossimo quattro luoghi, ma non Prometto niente. Quindi questa sera parlo inglese. Good evening and welcome to Villa Taverna. We are here to celebrate the birth of America 238 years ago on July 4th, 1776 for America a long time ago, but of course for Italy, just a blink of an eye when we consider that Villa Taverna goes back in part to the sixth century and the catacombs underneath us here tonight go back to the third century. But on that date in 1776, uh, after months of debate in Philadelphia and after the fighting of a war with the British for already a year, the Continental Congress, consisting of 56 colonists representing 13 colonies, made the momentous decision to vote to sever the ties from the crown of England, the mother country. King George III, the despotic king of England, and my friend, the United Kingdom ambassador, I'm not sure if he's here tonight, but I'm sure he would agree with me, after many attempts by the colonies to reach a resolution of all their differences, made it clear that England would not give an inch and that only blows or war would decide whether America would break free of England. Further, the king proclaimed to the colonists that if you lose such a war, all of you, you who have led the rebellion, will all be hanged. So, a serious threat. But despite, despite such ominous threats, the Continental Congress did vote unanimously for independence, knowing full well that they were up against the most powerful empire in the world and that they were badly ill-equipped to confront it. Understanding the significance of what they had just done with their vote, the delegates, feeling the need of supporting each other, all pledged to each other their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. All, and when Benjamin Franklin, one of the delegates, left the hall in Philadelphia right after the vote, he reportedly said, now we all have to hang together, to which another delegate responded, we will either hang together or we'll hang separately. Not a very comforting thought. Well, we all know the outcome of that battle, but most people probably don't realize it took another seven years of conflict to finally force the British soldiers out of the New World and back to England so that the colonies would achieve their long sought after independence. It was a long and bloody war. Weeks before the vote was taken to sever the ties, John Adams, a delegate from Massachusetts and strong advocate for independence, nominated a 33-year-old delegate from Virginia named Thomas Jefferson to lead a committee of five people to draft the document that would explain and set forth the rationale for casting their vote on July 2nd to vote for independence. This became known as the Declaration of Independence, even though that name was nowhere found in the document. And when the written grievances against England and King George were actually stripped out of that document, and there were 26 such grievances, the document was less than 800 words in length. But even in its brevity, those spare and chosen words set forth a clear and principled vision of what they all expected of democratic governance. We all know this passage. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and that they are endowed by their creator 
with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. As among all those in the world who speak English, this has been labeled by many experts as the best known sentence in the English language. It presents a moral standard to which the United States should always strive. Notably, Abraham Lincoln considered the Declaration of Independence to be the foundation of his political philosophy. The document, the Declaration of Independence, read together with the United States Constitution adopted 12 years later, has over two centuries advanced the course of democracy, freedom, and equality in countless countries around the world. As an example, the inspiration and content of the 1789 French Declaration of Rights and Man and Citizens emerged largely from the ideals of the American Revolution. And these two documents, the Declaration and the Constitution, have served as the guiding light and touchstone for many, many countries who also chose to seek democracy, freedom, and equality in contrast to those who would pursue oppression, dictatorship, and conquest. In many ways, the Declaration of Independence is the greatest contribution ever to democracy and world order. So it is fitting that we acknowledge its importance here as we do each year. <clears throat> now, Thomas Jefferson was an enormous, important figure in the quintessential episode of American history. He is considered to be perhaps the greatest of all American statesmen, not only for his role in setting forth the basic tenets of our democracy in the Declaration of Independence, but his role in service to his country as governor of Virginia, as minister to France, as the first secretary of state, the second vice president, the third president who served for eight years. He kept up a lively correspondence for almost 50 years with his fellow statesman, John Adams, another great person who was part of that delegation, who also served as president. In a very strange quirk of fate, these friends and collaborators who had been through so much together both died on July 4th, 1826, exactly 50 years after the day of signing of the Declaration of Independence. As Adams lay on his deathbed at age 90, his last words he uttered were, Thomas Jefferson still survives, but he was mistaken. It turned out that Jefferson had died five hours earlier in Monticello at age 82. But Jefferson was much more than a great statesman. He was an inventor, an architect, a musician, a farmer, a philosopher, a writer, the founder of a university, the University of Virginia, and much more. He was a true genius. In fact, many consider him to be America's Leonardo da Vinci. What you may not appreciate is that Jefferson had an extraordinary love and appreciation for Italy and its culture. Some of you have, may have seen from Monticello, the 15-minute documentary as you entered about Jefferson and Monticello. His deep identification with Roman culture played a big part in his interest in Bel Paese. He regarded the Italians of his days as the heirs of all the classical traditions. He drew architectural inspiration from Roman villas and their 16th century Palladian descendants. Andrea Palladi, Palladio's series, The Four Books of Architecture, became the Bible that Jefferson consulted in the early stages of building his home in Virginia, which he named Multicino, Italian for Little Mountain. Later, he would employ the same architectural approach in his design and construction of the first buildings of the University of Virginia, which he founded. Jefferson taught himself Italian, one of five languages he spoke, and later made sure that Italian was taught at the universities. We, the United States and Italy, share a heritage of common ideals and the belief in the rights of people to govern themselves, something that Jefferson deeply understood. On the fourth day of July, Americans gathered to celebrate and recognize the achievement of a people's pursuit of freedom for the right to choose their own future and their own leaders and their own religion without fear of persecution or retaliation. <clears throat> Those rights, hard fought in revolutionary battlegrounds of Yorktown, Saratoga, and Trenton, have been defended again and again by ourselves and our allies in other places and in other contexts. 
Anzio, Normandy, Guadalcanal, names etched into our memories are the high cost of freedom, also serves as reminders that Jefferson's principles can, can be lost if not defended. <clears throat> the ideals enshrined in the Declaration of Independence should not and cannot be taken for granted. We have a duty to protect these universal principles for our children and for their children. The threats we face today may not only appear in the guise of confrontations, but through more insidious acts of aggression that, over time, can undermine the freedoms we so deeply cherish. Democracy can be threatened by unchecked partisanship as much as by territorial aggression. Equality can be quickly eroded by the corrosive, corrosive effects of big money and corruption, just as it is by extremism and its more malevolent offspring, terrorism. Our rights as individuals can be threatened by the failure to address injustice, be it social or legal, just as it can be stamped out by the murderous campaigns of leaders without legitimacy. We who enjoy the fruits of peace, liberty and prosperity, Americans and Italians alike, have a solemn duty to honor the sacrifices and vision of those who made our freedoms possible. As free citizens of Italy and of the United States of America, it is our obligation to assure that the democratic principles of free thought, free speech, Free association are defended in our homes, in the courtrooms, in the halls of government, and in the town squares. By doing this, we will be less likely to be forced to resort to the battlefield to ensure liberty and justice for all. In doing so, we carry forward the vision of Thomas Jefferson and the Founding Fathers focused through the lens of Italian genius. So please join me in toasting Thomas Jefferson the United States of America, and the Republic of Italy. Thank you.